I'm in the, oh, please come see me in the back, John Riley, coming to the stage right now, Jason Patrick. So, uh, if anyone out there is signed up for later in open mic and is freaking out that everybody has been super good so far, uh, let me tell you a story about five years ago. Um, <laughs> five years ago on Joko Cruise 2, uh, almost to the day, on this cruise, on this night, on this boat, on this stage, I did stand up for the very first time. So it's my, my five year birthday today. And uh, I was terrible, so if anyone was there, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've gotten better, I promise. But all this to say, uh, even though I was terrible, everybody loved and supported me anyways, because sea monkeys are awesome, so uh, don't worry. If you've never done this before, you're going to be great, and we're going to love you. Uh, I am very, very grateful to be celebrating my anniversary on the same boat, on the same stage with all of you here today, and I am very, very, very grateful that Tom Hanks is not on this boat. Can we all take a moment to be grateful that Tom Hanks isn't here? I don't trust him with boats. He can't be on a boat without getting thrown into a volcano, stranded on a deserted island, or no longer the captain anymore by the end of the movie. He has a bad track record with public transportation. Like his spaceships fall out of the sky. I never saw the Polar Express, but I have to assume at some point the train derails and careens through Santa's workshop, given his track record. He had a movie come out over the holidays called Sully, about the, the pilot whose name was Sully, who landed a plane in a river. You guys remember Sully? Yeah. yeah. For those who don't know, Sully was a pilot. He took off from New York, uh, decided to fly through an entire flock of geese, and then landed <laughs> in the Hudson River, and everyone called him a hero because nobody died. And I didn't want to watch that movie, but I very badly wanted to watch my dad watch that movie. Because <laughs> my dad was an airline pilot for 30 years. You know, when that story broke about Sully, he was just sitting there watching the TV with his arms crossed, grumbling to himself. And I'd tease him, I'd say, what's the matter, Dad? Do you mean you ever land a plane on a river? <laughs> he said, no, I landed a plane on a runway at my scheduled destination on time, like I was supposed to. Where's my movie? Who's playing me? My passengers wanted to go from New York to Orlando. I took them to Orlando, not a much wetter part of New York. <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say about that except that my dad was right, and please don't tell him I said he was right. <laughs> no, it's okay, my dad and I get along now, but we didn't always have a lot in common to like bond over. Uh, uh, like my dad used to watch football when I was a kid, and he used to ask me, Jason, who do you think is going to win the football game? And I never cared a lick about football, uh, so I just picked based on the names of the teams. Right? I'd say, like, obviously the Giants are going to win. <laughs> Because a dolphin cannot defeat a giant. That's, that's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> Turns out they're not all no-brainers, though. It's 30 years later, and I am still plagued by the existential quandary over whether or not the color brown can defeat the number 49. <laughs> Don't even know where to start on that one. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Of uh, the people we've seen today, I want to give a special shout-out to uh, Bonnie on the harp, because... Uh, <laughs> In addition to uh, having the harp of an angel and the voice to match, she has a very particular skill set that can make all of our dreams come true. Bonnie knows how to run this boat. And like we've joked in the past, right? We've joked about taking over the ship and never going back. Well, <laughs> we're having a good time. We're just kidding around. But seriously, though, it's all of us this time. We could do it. <laughs> like this time we have the numbers. We can make it happen. And Bonnie can keep us alive after we do. <laughs> And like, yeah, well, there's still the whole trick of like overthrowing the crew or whatever, but all we keep hearing from principles of Orn is that the crew loves us better than any other passengers they've ever had. Like, we just pitched it to them, right? Like, what if we were the only passengers that you guys ever had ever again? I feel like they'd go for it, right? Bloodless mutiny. Who's on board? Yes. Sounds cute to me. So, uh, I'm going to tell one quick story about the time I went to Japan, and then I'm going to go. Um, I, uh, I went to Japan a couple of years ago. It's the uh, only non-Joko trip I took in, in recent years. And uh, I visit a lot of Buddhist temples, because it turns out that's 80% of what there is to do in Japan. And they had this sign up that was just like a, a hand coming down on a mosquito with a circle and a line through it. And I, I asked what that meant. And someone said, oh, that's because uh, we are Buddhists, and we believe in reincarnation. 
And we ask that while you're on temple grounds, please do not swat any of the mosquitoes. They could be the reincarnation of somebody important, or perhaps even a loved one, so please just leave them alone. And that is not a compelling argument to me. Because I love my grandmother very much. And if she got reincarnated as a mosquito, then she lost the reincarnation sweepstakes. I want better than that for her, so I say, here, Grandma, have another go. I think better luck next time. Maybe come back as a turtle or something. Turtles are great. They live a long time. Some of them are ninjas. What's not to love? Right? Speaking of what's not to love, the double clicks, everybody.